uh, we were just chatting about the reports that President-elect Joe Biden has tapped his trusted advisor, Tony Blinken, uh, for a secretary of state. But what about Treasury Secretary? It's secretary chat here on Monday, folks. Of course, last week, uh, Mr. Biden said he decided that he will nominate uh, his Treasury Secretary uh, around Thanksgiving. Around Thanksgiving is unclear as to when it will be official. But here to discuss the top candidates that he may be choosing from with us is Yahoo Finance's Brian Chung. And Brian, there's people out there like you who might say, uh, you know, the Treasury Secretary choice here is, is much more important to be discussing today. Well, it's arguably the most important position given the economic situation that we find ourselves in, the deepest recession since the uh, Great Depression of the 1930s. So whoever Biden's pick is going to be is going to have their work cut out for them. Now, of course, we don't know who that person is going to be. We heard from the chief of staff for the Biden team that an announcement, uh, major cabinet announcements will be happening tomorrow. It remains to be seen if the Treasury position would be a part of that announcement. Of course, the Biden administration is saying that we'll at least get an get announcement sometime before or shortly after Thanksgiving this Thursday. Now, who's on the top of that shortlist right now appears to be former Fed Chair Janet Yellen. She was the head of the central bank from 2014 until 2018. And the reason why she appears to be at the top of that list is because the Biden administration, when making the announcement that they had picked a treasury secretary last week, said it was someone that was going to be accepted by all. Many saw that as uh, appeasing both moderates and progressives, which many see to be uh, Yellen as the candidate there. Now, of course, there are other names that are still floated on the shortlist, like Lael Brainer, who's the current Fed governor, but it does seem like there's a lot of expectation that it could be a former Fed chair, Janet Yellen. But again, we'll need to wait for an official announcement from the Biden team. But it does seem like she could be that name based off of the small hints that we've gotten from the Biden transition team so far. Yeah, Brian, that would put her in more of a political position, which we know Fed governors in general don't like to go, right? They they're, they tend to be more apolitical. Janet Yellen, when she was a governor, of course, just like Jay Powell, sort of tried not to sort of toe the line on politics. I mean, what can we draw from her time at the Fed in terms of what policy is likely to look like? And of course, this is, you know, we say this, all of this is, of course, speculation because we still don't know who the actual pick is going to be. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when it comes to uh, Fed people, we have to acknowledge that it's not uh, unprecedented for a Fed chair to end up as a Treasury Secretary. That was the case for uh, G, G. William Miller, who was the head of the Federal Reserve uh, a few decades ago. Now, Janet Yellen, if she is the pick, would be the second Fed chair to become Treasury Secretary. But it is definitely a true point that uh, focusing on the monetary policy side of things may not be as useful to uh, engineering fiscal policy as the Treasury Secretary if you don't have those contacts on Capitol Hill. And although many do see Janet Yellen as a career uh, economist at the Federal Reserve who may not be as kind of in depth or, or have as much experience working those networks on Capitol Hill. It is true that she does have experience in DC uh, meeting with some of those offices. And that's because before her time as the San Francisco Fed president and then Fed chair and then ultimately chair, uh, she actually was part of the Council of Economic Advisors under the Clinton administration. So she, she has worked inside of the White House before, although obviously not at the elevated level of a Treasury secretary, but she does know how fiscal policy is put together. Obviously, that's a major part of the thinking at the Federal Reserve as well, understanding what the uh, folks and their counterparts over uh, on Pennsylvania Avenue are doing. So I think that's something that she definitely does have under her belt, but I think that also has been a criticism for why maybe Lael Brainerd would be a better pick is because she actually served as an undersecretary, she's been in G7 meetings before. So again, these two kind of candidates jockeying for the top spot here, uh, they do, however, both have experience in DC. Yeah, Brian, looking back at that at that hint you ref, you referred to a little bit earlier there and saying, uh, you know, Joe Biden says you'll find it someone who I think uh, will be accepted by all elements of the Democratic Party, progressive to the moderate coalitions. Those are reasons as to why you could point to a Yellen as who he could be alluding to. But what about the flip side, too, when we start ruling people out? Because it would seem to me that that would immediately eliminate uh, Elizabeth Warren from contention here when you think about her maybe not pleasing the moderate coalition. Yeah, absolutely. It seemed like it wasn't that long ago, only a few weeks ago. But of course, in 2020, a few weeks can feel like a few years. But uh, Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts, who has really made a name of herself on the financial regulatory beat. She was a Harvard law professor who was uh, storied and helped set up the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau in D.C. But it does seem like if it is going to be someone indeed, as the Biden transition team has described, is someone that can appease 
both moderates and progressives, then that might take her out of the running because of her more formed views on uh, cracking down on the big banks. Now, of course, there are a number of other people that are still on the list uh, that we haven't ruled out yet. Uh, people like Sarah Bloom Raskin, who was a former Fed governor, in addition to Roger Ferguson, who's the current CEO of TIAA, but also former vice chair at the Fed. I mean, all of these picks, uh, at least with the aside from Elizabeth Warren, uh, they do seem to point at people who are a career economist or people who have had some sort of tenure at the Federal Reserve, a very different approach than, say, the Trump administration took with appointing a businessman, Stephen Mnuchin, the former CEO of One West Bank, to the Treasury Secretary. So it is very interesting to see that this is a different approach approach from the Biden administration. But again, we don't have that final name yet. We'll see that announcement if it is indeed the case tomorrow or later this week. All right, Brian Chung, appreciate you bringing us that update. We'll, we'll, we'll keep everybody out there posted. I'm sure you'll be watching it closely. Thanks again. Thanks.